Hey guys, I'm Evelyn. Thanks for joining me again. Today we are going to talk about sparkling wine production and how sparkling wine is made. So when we get into sparkling wine, it's kind of interesting because sparkling wine actually goes through a second fermentation. And the second fermentation can be done either in the bottle or in a tank. And so we get these two methods that are called the champagne method or the traditional method and the tank method, which is what we use to make Prosecco. And you might hear these methods called by different names depending on where you are in the world. For example, the traditional method in Italy is actually called Metodo Classico. But let's get into it and talk about that champagne method. Let's talk about this traditional method. So how it works is the first fermentation is done just like the normal winemaking process, okay? Then at the end, when you're ready to bottle, you put the wine in your bottle but you add a little bit of extra yeast and sugar so that that yeast can eat that sugar and convert it into CO2. And you top it off with this thing called a crown cap that sort of looks like the, the caps you use to, to close beer bottles. You top it off and what that's gonna do is help add a little pressure and also with that yeast eating that sugar, you're gonna have the CO2 so you're gonna end up with those bubbles. And when you do this process, Usually it's going to take a little bit longer than the tank method. So you go through this process called riddling, okay? While you're aging your bottles, while you're waiting for the fermentation process to happen, you turn the bottles at a 45 degree angle, and every day you go through this process called riddling where you turn the bottle at a quarter angle, okay? Why do you do that? Well, because you have all this yeast, and as the yeast is eating the sugar, it then dies and we call this lees. And you want all of that lees to sort of settle to the bottom as well as any extra sediment that might be in there. So that's why you do that and you do the turn to help it fall down. And a lot of these sparkling wines made in this way are going to be kept there in the bottle on lees, we say, in order to really develop some extra flavor. When you leave a wine like this, you especially get that like brioche flavor that you might be familiar with in some champagne. Um, and that's how you get it, is that you leave it with the yeast for as long as you want. Once you've done the second fermentation how you want, you've left it on the yeast as long as you want, you actually freeze the whole top of the bottle, so the crown cap and all of the extra dead yeast that was there, and then you pop it off. It's called disgorging, okay? Pop it off, and you're left obviously with a little bit less wine, but what you're going to do then is you're going to fill it up with a little bit more wine, and fill it up with a little extra sugar, depending on how sweet you want the wine, and top it off with a cork, and then it is ready for sale. So, why some people might like this method is, one, because of tradition. It might be, uh, it might be by law that they need to use this, but also it adds a lot of that extra flavor that I mentioned, that sort of brioche uh, flavor, and that might be something the winemaker is looking to add. We call it the champagne method because obviously it is the method to make champagne and it was originating in France. The champagne method is used to make champagne, cava, and francia corta. But then of course there's the alternative method, the one to make prosecco, which is called the tank method. This method is sometimes preferred because it can create more approachable and affordable wines. So the tank method, how does it exactly work? The first fermentation is exactly the same, you just make the wine. When it's ready to be bottled, instead of putting it in the bottle, you put it in a pressurized tank with a little extra yeast, and you let it sit in this pressurized tank just for a few days or a week, and then when it's ready, you open it up and you bottle it, and that's as simple as that. So it is a lot more approachable, and it makes sort of an easier drinking wine. So champagne method is used to make champagne, cava, and francia corta. But then of course there's a more approachable tank method which creates the affordable Prosecco. So the tank method is the first fermentation is the same, okay? Once your wine is ready to go through the second fermentation, you add it to this pressurized tank with a little bit of yeast and you let it sit there for about a few days to a week. When it is the desired level of bubbling, you take it out and you bottle it and it is ready for sale. So it's a much quicker process and a lot of winemakers might prefer that. It also makes a more affordable option for consumers, but these wines, like Prosecco, won't have the full flavor profile, they won't have the same character as a wine made with the traditional method. 
So the last method that is worth mentioning is this thing actually called the ancestral method. And the ancestral method is really unique because rather than a second fermentation, it's actually kind of like you stop the fermentation, the first fermentation a little early. What you do is you actually let the fermentation happen in the bottle and you let it sort of pressurize in the bottle. And so what's particular about it is that it's really difficult to get right because you need just the right amount of sugar. Because if you have too much sugar with the pressure, your bottle might explode. If you don't have enough sugar, that fermentation won't happen enough, so you won't get those bubbles. And because of this, a lot of ancestral method wines that you'll find tend to be a bit sweeter, and they also tend to just be lightly fizzy rather than the amount of bubbles we're used to. And another characteristic about these wines is that they tend to be very cloudy because you have all the sediment and the, uh, and the yeast in the bottle. So you might have seen these around and you might have heard this ancestral method referred to as pet mats, which is the name that they've sort of taken off with with the natural wine movement. And if you are into natural wine, if you are looking just to explore your entire wine palette, these pet mats are something really interesting to check out because they're just something completely different. So let us know, do you have a favorite type of sparkling wine? Do you think you prefer the traditional method or the tank method or the ancestral method? Let us know down below. I look forward to hearing from you guys. And again, if you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like, subscribe, and follow along for some great wine content.